according to my cell phone company, it's 632. So I think we can start. And so I'll call, recall the meeting to order. And Mr. Clerk, could you tell us the status? Yes, so for those of you who have not heard, Mr. Goldman has withdrawn his appeals on his four properties. That's as of about 3.30 today. So, surprise. <laughs> that sort of changes the nature of the meeting a little bit. So, so we'll just have um, Marty's report about Down Street, and then we've got uh, Mr. Crussman, Crussman here um, to speak uh, as a response to the report uh, that he received. He wants to be able to respond to it. And, okay. Uh, that's going to be it. So, right. so, Marty, you're up. Um, everybody remembers the Down Street properties. There are 15 of them um, that was punted back to me. I've gone back and forth with the state. There's been four or five different people that I've spoken to. Um, on the, sh the second page, there is a worksheet. Um, gives the property addresses. The, um, the amount per valuation worksheet submitted per property, the first column on the left-hand side, those are the values of each individual property as submitted by Downstreet. Next column is formal reappraisal received. Those are the numbers that the reappraisal contractor came up with. And then the differences on the right-hand side. So uh, you can see down at the bottom right-hand corner, there's a, a difference of a million. 567,498. <clears throat> Back on the first page, the um, reappraisal contractor had concerns with four different um, expenses. The expenses were signed off by an independent CPA firm um, and verified by the state of Vermont property valuation and review employee as being legitimate real estate expenses. Um, if you remember what they were, the first one was a software, a specialized software that they have to use for subsidized housing. Um, the second fee is a credit card fee, which is used for um, tenants to be able to pay their rent. If anybody's paid their parking ticket in Montpelier online, there's a $5 fee. Um, that fee is included in the subsidized housing so that folks can pay their rent by credit card. Um, the other is a... Uh, um, is training fees, which you have to train the people because these, these are all HUD subsidized homes. Um, the, the programs are changing constantly, so the, the staff needs to be trained on how to do this. Um, so it's my recommendation that we accept the um, proposed values in the first column under amount per valuation worksheet submitted. Um, and you will, as I said before, you'll see there, there will be a difference of a million five. Um, the third page in also. In aggregate of all the properties. Yes, in aggregate of all. The third page is a, um, the state of Vermont has a, um, an Excel spreadsheet. It's pretty, pretty simple. You plug in how many units there are. This is just a sample of one of the units. Um, it tells you what it's worth. So there was no discrepancy on the income for all of the properties. It was the four expenses that the, the reappraisal contractor had an issue with. Those have all been verified by a CPA and by the state. So you were also saying at the time of the hearing that their property tax had also not been fixed. The way that they were figuring the cap rate, is all, it's, it's been um, determined that it was done properly. Yeah. Any other questions? Tim? Well, I guess, so if I'm reading this right, so is the, is the assessment on one unit at 34 Main Street, or is it for the entire yeah, so 18 if you look, units? Um, 21 Heber. The, well, let's look at this worksheet. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's okay. That one, yeah, that is. So yeah. down in the bottom right-hand corner, we give a listed value. This is just an example uh, of 219.6. That's for um, the French block apartments. That's for all of them. For all 18? Yes. Oh, it says all unit two at the top. What's that? Condo, right? So Abishan Hardware. Oh, is unit one. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah, yeah that was the pilot from the state per square foot that we get from these guys. Yeah. We get a lot from the state from the pilot, yeah. This, but, this is mess. I, I, I agree with we're all stunned. I am too. This is this is all legislature passed in previous, I mean, years ago. And that's why this worksheet in the back is tied into the, legis the um, legislation. I think it's called Act 75. Ma Mary, you might remember. I, I don't remember the number, Act something. Um, but this is all based on the HUD numbers that the state came up with. I think it's appropriate for us or maybe a city council, because we're here too, it would be maybe talk with our legislators about revising this. This is really not well, I assume that the reasoning is that this is this is a policy decision by the legislature to encourage investment in a sub subsidized housing by suppressing the taxes they're paying, right? Jack, I charge lower rents than they do. I have good affordable units in town, and I don't get any free. This is really no. nice. Well, I, I hear you. It's a conversation we need to have. I yeah. Agree. Mary. Since we seem to be having a general conversation. I, I think it would be wise to point out to our reps and ask them to talk with ways and means about the consequence of this, because I, I agree, and I, and I personally totally support figuring out how to create as much of the, this sort of housing as possible. But I suspect that people may not realize what a cost shift it is to municipalities. I mean, I mean you look at this chart, it goes, whoa. Yeah. Um. I mean, we have, there's, it would be hard to find a single family home in Montpelier valued at this, this amount. I think one of the best one of the best people to talk to would be John Davis, who came to the senior center um, for the grievance hearing. He seems to be an, he or he is an expert on the way this program works. I think he would be a good one to maybe come in front of the council one day. I can try to facilitate that if there's a need for it. And it, it might make everybody feel better to understand how this works. Karen. Yeah, I I think. I, I think we understand how it works. I think the problem is that we're, uh, I, I'm agreeing with Tim and with Mary that this is a, a really enormous cost for the city to have to bear. Um, I'm also very supportive of what the legislature was trying to do and provide incentives, but I'm not sure that the math was done to understand that you're asking municipalities to actually foot this bill um, rather than the state. It seems like if the state wants to subsidize this, then they should. So, yeah. and it may be so old that it hasn't been updated. You know, I know that to put all that this in place. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, it's. <laughs> it's a good conversation to have for the council because, right? It seems like our hands are tied, but um, wow. there's going to be more of a need for it. You know, it's not going away, so it'd be good for the council to understand it. Yeah, because we're going to be trying to develop more subsidized housing. And if, I mean, and maybe this policy remains the way it is, but to whoever said more pilot, so there is a way of bringing money into the communities that choose to step up and support people in this way, but bring more money in so it's not such a cost shift, particularly since your pilot, our pilot payments are going to be capped pretty soon. One right. of the things that is a concern to me is that not just in Montpelier, but other municipalities, this is a real disincentive to approve other housing, right? Well, no, I think most people don't even understand it. What the consequences? Well, I mean, because how can you say no? We don't want more low-income housing, and then when you look at this, you say, so how are we going to pay for it? Yep. I've seen these guys at hearings permitting their property, saying, "We pay taxes." I'm like now that I know what you pay, it's like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Something we can put on our work list. And <laughs> we'll, we uh, 
we'll be talking to our legislators. Uh, so the chair would accept a motion to approve this. So moved. Is there a second? I think Rosie has a question. Oh, Rosie. I just wanted to ask the process. What, because Marty has talked with this, this still needs to be accepted by us, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I will second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, aye with a heavy heart. Any opposed? I'll say no. It just yeah. doesn't sit right with you. No, yep. I don't. I, oh, I agree. Well, it's it's to many of us, I think. Yep. This, problem. I mean, this, now have any choice. this is why it took me three months to get to, to the bottom of it. Yep. You know, it's not something I took lightly. I t it had a lot of conversations within the state. Um, and they basically said, this is what the legislature wants. Hmm. Does the phrase unfunded mandate uh, <laughs> yeah. ring a bell? Yeah, it does ring. Already I'll get that from tomorrow. I'll get the list from tomorrow. You can have it right now if you want. Okay. Thanks, Marty. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, we have Mr. Kruisman. And we're starting with the report, right? Or are we having, starting with having Mr. Kruisman testify? Uh, we're going to start with the report, usually. Okay. Yep. The, um, and so the report comes from Carrie, Bob, and Mark, so I don't know. Is that when we the email? Yeah, it so, would have been sent out. So that would look like and I have some other copies too if somebody didn't bring them. take a copy. Yeah. Okay. Do you have some? Uh, no, wait a minute. Here we go. I have quite a few. Thank you. Can I take the small? No, pass them all around. Okay, let me see if we run out. I'll just hand them to you and you can get them going. So Carrie or Mark, who wants to guide Anybody us through else? this? Oh, and just informationally, everybody can vote on this one except for Sarah, because she wasn't here for the... Oh, Mary. You weren't here either, were you? Okay. Okay. Okay, this is 45 Terrace Street. Um, Bob and Mark and I inspected the property. This is a, a three-unit house um, on a fairly large lot. Um, there's a, let me see, it's a one, one bedroom, one two bedroom, and one studio apartment. And it's in really nice condition, very, you know, nice, nice place. Um, we, we looked at the, the accuracy of the information. There was none, none of the accuracy was in dispute. We looked at the, um, comparable sales and we found that the per unit price was right around in the middle of the comparable sales. We looked at the the equity comparables that the assessor had provided, same thing, it was right around in the middle. And then we looked at one that the um, that the appellant had provided, um, which was a, one other property, um, 32 Loomis Street, and the um, per unit cost there was a, a, a a little bit lower than um, the appellant property, but not significantly and still felt within that same range. So we felt like um, like the case had not been made to reduce the assessment, and so our recommendation is to maintain the current assessment. Okay. Any questions for the before we hear from the taxpayer? All right. Oh, you're up. So I, I, I sent in my dispute. Was that shared with yeah. everyone? Yeah. The Okay. So my, my, my dispute is that the comparable sales aren't comparable. They, they range from 1,000 to 2,500 square feet larger than my property, all of them. They all have two to five more bedrooms than my property. They have four to eight more rooms. And if you know anything about rental market, it's all about bedrooms and square footage. And one of the comparable sales, 6 Woodrow Avenue, according to the tax records, is actually a single family home, not a multi-unit dwelling. So I, I, I think my property should not fall in the middle of all of them if it's significantly less, has significantly fewer bedrooms, and significantly fewer rooms. 
from a rental perspective. So that's my rebuttal is I should be at the low end, if not below the low end. And the, the, the comparable sale I provided is actually very similar in terms of number of bedrooms, number of square foot, and number of total rooms. Okay. So I would, I would ask you to reconsider where I fall in that range of those comparable sales. Okay, thanks. Anyone have any questions for the taxpayer? Okay, thanks for coming in. Thank um, you. Is there a motion to approve the report? Is there a second? I'll second it. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? So okay. may, may I ask what my next? Yes. You have, what, what's available there, to me as the next line of discussion? Yeah, there are two uh, avenues of appeal. One is to the uh, tax department. The other is to Superior Court. And how do they work? There will be detail on the report I sent you, but one of them, uh, they, you both, in both cases, you just bring a letter to me. Okay. And if it's you're appealing to the division evaluation, it's a seventy dollar check to them. And if you're appealing to Superior Court, it's a two hundred ninety five dollar fee for each parcel. Yeah. Okay. So. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Do we have anything else? All right. Well, at uh, six forty five, we will be in recess. Um, To the right. Next time, senior center. Oh, is it next week, John? Or? Yeah. Are we meeting next week? Yes. Yeah. So Mark and Rosie, we should talk about schedule because I got it. Got some information. And I expect we'll have a gold process. I always feel so bad that we don't have any questions. It just feels like they. We're not giving any time or consideration. Well, but now we don't have this. Oh, you got all the I don't feel the same way. I mean, is anyone else? I mean, I think that we can make the process a little more personable than if we are. So, just so, just so you know, Donna, okay. um, everyone that's been here, they've already come through an informal process. They've met with the appraisal contractors. No, no, I'm just saying. Like, I have also spoken to them. Um, Carpenter, I spent hours talking to her. I'm not from this group. It just seems like you know, we have this report. They have their, they have, and then we vote. And it's just, anyway, I just feel they've, like I've spent a lot of time with everyone that's been here so far. I, I really appreciate that. Yeah, no, I, I'm not trying to brag. I'm just saying that they have, and no, and anytime they call, I answer any question they have. I, I email off any any information they need. So it's not a cold process. We do spend, I, I spend a lot of time. No, no, this, 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 the steps here, that's all. This is well. something, there's some transition, something. Well, I agree. I, I want people to come away from this. Do we need to come back in if we're going to discuss the process? Yeah. Um, yeah. We formally recessed, so I just want to make sure we're. That's true. Yeah. Recessed. Let's, let's come out of recess. Great. <laughs> 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 and maybe, I mean, maybe it's only me, but it's just, I really thought there's something. Ought to be something we could insert. Hmm. Statement. Statement. Um, but maybe nobody else feels that way. I agree, it feels awkward, but I don't know. I mean, it's just that's part of the process. That's what it is, yeah. I always want to make people feel that they've been heard, that everything, that they've had a complete opportunity to say everything they're going to say. And so some of the appeals have gone, and we, we shot for 15 minutes a case from the beginning, but we've certainly gone over on a number of them because the people aren't done and I don't want to cut people off. It just, it just seems like even like, even a statement like, even though there's no questions, everyone has read your file ahead of time, we've come prepared, mm -hmm. we've considered this, but as you can see, they're fine to agree with, with the committee. Just some little transitional statement. I'm just, no, that's a, fair, think about? that's a good suggestion, I think, yeah. We're learning through this. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else want to address this before we pack up and go home? Okay. We're in recess again at uh, 6.48. Uh,
we'll see what comes in the rest of the week, but it's easy. <laughs>